In this video, I will show you how to make this cool little pocket Faraday box that actually works to protect you from relay attacks when you are out and about. If you have heard of thieves using relay attacks to steal things inside of vehicles or worse, stealing the whole vehicle, then you know how important it may be to use a Faraday box. This pocket Faraday box can be used to block relay attack devices from relaying the signals between your vehicle and its key fob. Keyless entry, keyless start, or keyless go vehicles are vulnerable to relay attacks not only when you are at home. When you are out and about at the grocery store, mall, movie theater, and more, it is possible for someone to walk next to or behind you with one of these relay attack devices. That person can relay your key fob signal to another person standing outside next to your vehicle. The person next to your vehicle can then unlock the doors and start the vehicle and then drive off. By the time you get back to your parking spot sometime later, the whole vehicle is gone. This is possible because these tools can easily be purchased online and when used can transmit 100 meters away. You may already be familiar with Faraday bags or Faraday pouches used to prevent relay attacks, but one thing you must be aware of is that they may stop working after several months of use. That's what happened to mine. When you check the reviews of these products, you see that this is a common problem. It is possible that as the fabric is flexed and folded from use, or when the keys are inserted and removed, small holes or tears are introduced that leak signal. So if you have one, you must regularly test it. An alternative solution to prevent relay attack theft would be a working portable Faraday box that you can use to store your key fob or credit cards in. In our other video, I show you how you can make your own DIY Faraday box in a book box like this. It has been tested to work great, but is not portable. So this may be what you need instead. Fracking Creations, showing you the good stuff on how to make a cool pocket Faraday box. What box to use? Metal tin boxes are a great foundation for making Faraday boxes because they will already reduce radio signals to some degree. Though note that they do not work well enough by themselves as shown here. Actual testing shows that they can leak radio frequency signals due to thickness of metal used or radio frequency leakage around the lid opening and seams. All you need to do is to properly seal with enough shielding to block out the RF signals you are targeting and to properly test. And because there are no folding or flexing parts to wear out like Faraday bags, they will last longer too. You can use any shape container you like and they are quite durable. I found these cool little tins that can fit different sized key fobs and can easily be converted to portable and functioning Faraday boxes. I'll provide the links to these boxes and items I use in the video description below. By the way, if you find these add-on features useful, find out how to add them in the bonus chapter at the end of the video or use the chapters function to skip to any chapter to watch. What shielding material to use? You can use Faraday fabric like this, aluminum foil, or also copper shielding tape. They all work, but also have pros and cons. The simplest is to use aluminum foil since most people readily have this in the kitchen. I prefer not to, as aluminum foil tears easily, so you have to be careful when laying it out. Also, note that the thickness of the material also affects the effectiveness of the shielding. Aluminum foil comes in different thicknesses. Cheap ones are much thinner and will need more layers to provide enough shielding capabilities. I prefer to use copper shielding tape or Faraday fabric tape. They both have conductive adhesive, which is great for maintaining conductivity when joining multiple surfaces together. These work well and are easier to use than aluminum foil. For a project like this, these two shielding tapes are ideal. A word of caution before you start. The copper tape and RF shielding tape have sharp edges that will give you many little cuts if you don't be careful when handling it. So be careful. Making the Faraday box. Liner. To make this little Faraday enclosure, we are going to upgrade the shielding capabilities of the tin box by putting in a shielding liner. The foundation of the liner will be cardboard. You will have to choose the thickness of the cardboard to use to get the desired result to fit your key fob. Note that we will be lining the cardboard with shielding tape at a later stage, which will result in a liner that is thicker than the original cardboard. Measure, trace, and cut out the cardboard and perform your test fit. It may help to bend and curve the cardboard using a ruler and an edge of a desk so that it can form the shape of the tin box easier. Make sure to test fit everything nicely before adding the shielding tape, or you may end up with a liner that doesn't fit and a lot of wasted shielding tape. In some cases, you want the liner to be a little smaller, Doing so also allows room for other features like the key ring and lid holder mods, which I show how to do later in the video. The side and bottom pieces are made and shielded separately, then later joined together using shielding tape. Note that the bottom piece needs to be cut smaller than the tracing used so that it will fit in the box. Making the Faraday box. 
Shielding. Once you have your cardboard lining sized accordingly, you need to shield it. Line the cardboard with at least two layers of shielding tape where each layer fully wraps around the cardboard. You can use more layers if you need better shielding. Just remember that for every layer you add, the thicker the final shielding liner will be. Make sure to wrap around the whole piece of cardboard, including the edges. Once you have the side or main body piece shielded, you can line the inside face with some clear packing tape. This helps to protect the shielding material from tears and prevents scratch damage to and from the keys. This is also a good idea since it prevents any conducting surfaces of the key fob from touching the tape directly. Make sure to leave exposed metal on the side edges that are to be connected together and also at the top and bottom edges so that the body piece can maintain conductivity with the bottom piece and also with the lid of the box. Next, fold the body piece to form the liner into the shape of the box, then tape it together. You want to make sure the two end pieces touch firmly and that you cover the seam so that signals can't leak in or out through it. I use three pieces of copper tape to connect the two sides. Make sure to wrap around the top and bottom edges. Lastly, shield the bottom piece with at least two layers, then attach the shielded bottom piece in a way that maintains conductivity with the body piece. Use two layers of shielding tape to attach. Next, tap down on the bottom and top ends to flatten the edges evenly. This will be important to form a proper seal with the top lid and bottom end piece. Once done, you can insert the shielding liner and adjust the form to fit if needed. Note that the edges at the top of the liner can get sharp, so use any smooth metal tool to round out the edge if necessary. Making the Faraday Box Shielded Lid The lid by itself is not able to provide enough shielding, and in fact, even when tested with two layers of shielding tape added, it wasn't enough to block the key fob signals. You will have to add as many layers of shielding tape as needed based on your testing. Trace, cut out, and attach the tape. Form it to cover most of the lid. You will want at least one of the layers of the foil to form up into the lip of the lid to cover any gaps. Use any suitable tool to help press the tape into the lip, but be careful not to puncture the tape. For the rest of the layers, they do not need to cover the lip, but they will need to be sized to at least cover the full opening of the liner. For the sliding lid boxes, adding a piece of fabric like this to the bottom of the liner can add a little spring action, which pushes the liner up into the lid to help provide a better seal. This will also help if you made the inner lining too short to reach the lid. The properly sized fabric can help achieve proper contact with the lid. Testing. Once your box is completed, always test. This pocket Faraday box will be tested using the key fob for the car and also using NFC credit cards. Initial testing of the Faraday box shows that we only need better shielding of the lid area, which originally only had two layers. After adding three additional layers to the lid, it now passes successfully. When tested on NFC credit cards, this also passes. We have finally achieved our objective of a fully functioning pocket Faraday box for key fobs and NFC or RFID cards. Remember to find links to the resources and to the app used in our video description below. Bonus! Here's a little bonus for watching to the end of our video. Add these two cool features to your box to make it more user friendly. A pull ring to add lanyards or keychains to, and a magnetic lid holder to hold the lid while you place and remove items from the box. A magnetic lid holder can be added by adding a rare earth magnet between the metal box and the liner. Just find a suitable location and use some shielding tape to tape it securely in place. Note that when making the liner, you will need to size it a little smaller so that this can fit. A pull ring can easily be added using readily available pull ring studs like these that are screwed on. Use a center punch to make a small dent to drill from. Be careful so you don't hurt yourself or damage the box. Carefully drill a hole of the correct size, then remove any loose metal shavings off. Attach the pull ring stud using some thread lock. After firmly tightening, use a few sheets of shielding tape to seal the hole from the inside and that's it. Also, to customize your box, you can use vinyl wrap like this carbon fiber one. There are many to choose from, so find one that will suit your needs. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like and share it with friends and family. If you try this out, let us know how it goes.